Hey coin collectors, welcome to DC Coinroll International Coin Channel. And today it's the Roosevelt Dimes from 1970. We have three of them here. This one here is Philadelphia. And you can see that that's Roosevelt there on the front facing to the left. It says Liberty in front of him and God we trust here. J.S. down there underneath his neck. And that's for John Sinek, the engraver of this coin. And then 1970. For the San Francisco Mint, there will be an S there, but this you can tell the difference between these two coins. This is a proof coin. And so at the San Francisco Mint, they only made proof coins in 1970. And that's what this one right here is. And this is a Denver Mint coin. Again, from the uncirculated mint set. At the Philadelphia Mint in 1970, they made 346 million dimes. Of those dimes, they found two at a Mint State 66 full bands, and those are worth $2,400. How many did they make at Denver? In Denver in 1970, they made 755 million. Of those, they found one Mint State 68 worth $3,500. And finally, at the San Francisco Mint in 1968, they made the 2.6 million proof sets, and they found 358 of these at a Proof 69 Deep Cameo, and those Proof 69 Deep Cameos are worth about $80. Why isn't it worth more? Well, if you look at the back of this coin, even the San Francisco Mint used kind of worn out dies. San Francisco Mint's better than the Denver or the Philadelphia Mint where you can't see very much at all in the back, but it's still not anywhere near what a new die in a good condition will look like. One of the special things about the 1970 dime is they have some they forgot to put the S's on. It's called the No S dime and that's going to be worth anywhere from $1,150 to almost $6,000. The U.S. Mint says there are about 2,200 San Francisco dimes but they forgot to put the S on them. There have been about 500 plus of those found so far. So there might be some out there. I wanted to talk about the background a little bit too. This is a envelope from the Treasury Department. And in 1970, this is how you got your uncirculated mint set coins. The Treasury Department would put them in an envelope and mail them to you. One of the problems that they had was collectors wanted to have the envelope too, and they didn't want that destroyed. Frequently they would mail them in different packaging so the collectors could keep this envelope because this envelope, it turns out, is an important part of having an uncirculated mint set. The uncirculated mint set in 1970 would have two dimes, a Denver dime and a Philadelphia dime with no mint mark. And they also added a couple extra things in there. They added a San Francisco nickel and a San Francisco penny. So let's take a look at the actual uncirculated mint set. This is how you'd get it if you bought it. It would come right like this down here. You can tell where it's from, 1970. And then when you open up the envelope, the first thing you see is this cardboard piece here. And you'll notice that there's a cardboard piece here and a cardboard piece at the bottom. And inside you're going to get one of these cellophane wrappers. And each of these wrappers is from a different mint. So if you look at this one here, you see this one is from the Denver Mint. And so the red here is for Denver, and you can look it up by this. You obviously, you can also look it up by taking the dime that's in there and seeing that it has a D on it. So this wrapper is from Denver, and it has the penny, dime, nickel, quarter, and Kennedy half, and a token. The other one's a little bit different. And I'll show you the difference here. This one here is from Philadelphia, and you can read the Philadelphia right here. You can also turn it over and see the no mint mark on here. Uh, but then when you look at this one, you'll notice that this has a nickel from San Francisco. Right here, there's the S nickel. And this one has a penny from San Francisco. So this one is interesting because for the 1970 mint set, it has a quarter, dime, and penny from Philadelphia, but it has another penny and a nickel from San Francisco, and it doesn't have a half dollar. The only half dollar in the 1970 uncirculated mint set is this one here, and as you can see, this is a Denver half dollar. The only two nickels that they have in the mint set are the Denver and the San Francisco nickels. No Philadelphia nickel and no Philadelphia half dollar in the uncirculated mint sets. So they're a little bit different than the newer mint sets which have one of everything. So 
These two came from a mint set, but this one here came from a proof set, and that's a different animal altogether. In 1970, they made two million of these mint, uncirculated mint sets, and they made 2.6 million proof sets. When you get a proof set from 1970, you're going to get a different finish on it. It's going to have a totally different look, and you can see this coin has a different polish finish and it's not going to be the same as a circulating coin. So if you did find a proof set, not the uncirculated set, but if you did find a proof set, you always look to see whether there's an S on the dime in it. One of the things that happened in 1970 was some of the reverses on the coins were the 1968 reverses. The dies they used to punch out the back of the coins had been changed between 1968 and 1970, and in both Philadelphia and Denver, they put the 1968 reverses on some of the coins. Those coins, if you get them up to a mint state 66 or higher, and it's a Philadelphia coin, are worth $3,000. If you get it for the Denver coin and get a 1968 reverse, it's worth about $400. All right, well, that's all we have today from DC Coin World International Coin Channel. We'd love to have you subscribe to the channel and leave any comments you have in the comments section.